Hello everybody. Hi. Welcome and thank you so much for being here. We're going to do a collective timeless reading. So whenever it finds its way to you is the right time. Just keep in mind it's a general reading. So see which signs, symbols, ideas resonate for you in your particular situation and help to bring you a little bit of clarity on whatever you're wondering, concerned, confused about. It could broaden your perspective, show you something from a different angle and a different light. It could narrow your focus, show you something you could be missing. In the end, trust yourself, trust yourself. That divine inner guidance is inside of you. And always try to make balanced decisions between logic and intuition so that your decisions are sound and based in love and for the highest and greatest good of everybody. So we're all uplifted in love. Let's begin with the Ephraimators <laughs> Oracle. Let's get a little clarity for the collective. Let's see what God, Source, Holy Spirit, Christ Consciousness, our higher selves, angels and energies of love have for the highest and the greatest good of all. Clarity for the collective. Start with one card, please. Thank you. to do look at this what is it it's like a I don't know, some kind of little animal little little animal maybe like a fox or a ferret or something holding maybe a feather like fanning themselves and they're just on the hammock in between the two signs that say do this do that <laughs> and so maybe you don't have to actually do anything maybe you just have to oh wow Sometimes it's the time to push, the time to pursue, the time to put energy into, and other times you gotta rest. You gotta sit back, allow something to happen out there, allow them to do that over there, and just come back to you. So we keep getting this like gentle take a break, take a break a roo energy. Do I have my glasses? I always do this. I don't know. Oh no, I, I can see it. I can see it. Let me put my nerdy glasses on. My old lady readers. Okay. I am exactly where I need to be. Exactly when I need to be. There's nothing more I need to do. I mean, yes, there will always be laundry and taxes. But in terms of my life's path, I don't need to do anything because I am already here. Take a deep breath and trust and then do laundry <laughs> so you know you have to do the things you have to do we have to be responsible and take care of our everyday duties and activities but as far as like freaking out on what you're gonna be when you grow up <laughs> what are you gonna do you know where is my life going sometimes we're exactly where we want to be where we should be even though it might not feel like that Sometimes we feel like we're exactly in the right place at the right time. And then other times you're like, I don't even know where to go right now. But it's those in-betweener times that like push us in a weird direction. You know, take us to a place where we meet that person. You know, go through some situation where we end up with our honey. Or go somewhere with our honey together. I mean, it's just the in-between times are also important so if you're stressed out right now that you know you have to make a big decision or you don't you know, you're teetering what where do I go am I doing the right thing am I being who I'm supposed to be am I fulfilling all of my you know goals I had as a child or the goals I wrote down for myself and it's a step-by-step -step thing we're here every day to learn every day to live you can't do it all in a day so Sometimes you just have to allow things to be. It could be seeing things, you know, in reality land too. But I feel like you're resting. You're letting something go. Letting something, like, unfold naturally. You know, you still have some stuff to do. <laughs> but your life's path is unfolding as you're on it. I feel like, I don't know, it's like, 
kind of see like if your soul is like a teacher, you know, you're a teacher. That's what you're just meant to do. We have like totally different paths that are possibilities during our life that with our free will and our circumstances can guide us towards different, like little, you know, like different parallel lifetimes. They're all good. They're all kind of getting us where we need to be and experiencing what we need to learn. But perhaps the details are different. You know, so if you had a friend when you were really young that did something cool, got you into ballet or got you into working on cars or whatever it is, and that kind of took you down a diff uh, like a certain path. And... Maybe you've always had this desire, you know, because you were like kind of like maybe you're working on cars, but you're like secretly, you know, a nerd about chemistry or something like that. Like maybe there's somebody you meet somewhere along the way that like gets you into school and you're like, oh, I'm going to be chemistry. Maybe you're a chemistry teacher. Maybe you teach the people around you. It's like you can be a teacher in many different areas. Maybe you have different talents or different things you can do, but it's like how your path unfolds. It's still... Even if, let's say, for instance, like you're a therapist, you tend to help, you want to help people. You want to help people through situations. Maybe you went to, you know, you went to college for it and you got your degree and you sit in your office and you are a therapist. But maybe that didn't happen for you and you happen to end up as your soul be a bartender. But somehow, because your soul's purpose is there you're the one that has people in weird situations people go to bars for all kinds of reasons when they're happy when they're celebrating when they're going through something when they're alone when they're with friends when they're going on a date when they're with their family but like you have that opportunity to perhaps have a conversation and if you have that energy where somebody's just comfortable with you you just don't know why i just told you all that but you have those little possible moments where you can add a little wisdom, you know, light, sunshine, direction in somebody's life. And it doesn't mean you're sitting in an office, you know, with your clipboard. Okay, like talk about yourself when you're writing stuff down. I mean, that's good too, but maybe it's a different way. It doesn't always have to be the same way. So be okay with where, however, wherever you are. And just trust that flow of who you are is going to come out in every situation that you have. That was a weird example. I hope that made sense. Um, let's see what's at the bottom. Manifestation. Ooh, it's like green and white. I just like the colors. If you could have anything you wanted, what would it be? Get specific and get greedy. You're holding a magic wand and you can conjure up anything. Could it be that you declare your wishes out loud? You're actually casting a spell for your dreams to come true? Or is it just that in the very practical sense, the more people you speak to about your desires, the more folks are, the, the more folks there who know what you want and may have the means to help you make them happen. Either way, stop wanting and start manifesting. But don't use that word if you don't want to. It's a bonus card. So, I mean, it starts in like magical land, you know, but it brings it back to reality land, how manifestation can actually work. Because when you, like, you really are into something, a project, a person, where it is that you get that extra thing when you talk about it, people feel that energy. And they're like, hey, this person's really good at that or they have really good ideas at this thing they talk to somebody else they talk to somebody else it's like things can unfold it's not always just us that bring everything we're helped through situations and other people and opportunities and then it's it's also when your place of you know what you want to put out there when your intentions are from a place of real integrity of your soul and love towards humanity and others 
and it's that real high vibration, that's when it manifests like really big blessings. If you're greedy and you're thinking about things that are only selfish and you're taking away from others in order to get something for yourself, you're manifesting that kind of energy where somebody wants to take something from you to get it. So it's not focusing on those things that feel lower. It, you know, we're all human. We all think weird shit, but try to make, you know, the, the things that you're wanting to manifest brilliant and big and possible and have that sense of love, you know, that you just love to share this thing so much that they want to love to share it with somebody else or give something back to you because it's real and it's it's like a blessing it feels like a blessing not like a cursing kind of energy you know they're everything is a tool even these cards people can look at these as like oh scary and like you for fiends for for you know, you foresee things that could happen. No, it this reality. These cards are just real life situations that happen in life. You know, and it's like a knife. You can use a knife to hurt or you can use it to, you know, cut something and make a project and, you know, fix something to cut some vegetables. It's just the tool. It's how you use the tool that matters. It's the intention and the love behind it that matters. And that if it's about the cards where the messages come through. So even that's why I like to pull cards both ways and like to look at many. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't pick any, I, like I go all directions with the, with the energies of the cards I pick <laughs> They're all over the place. I have so many, but even the ones that feel darker, they're still awake. We all go through dark. Facing it and looking at it and then seeing how it can be a blessing is how you use it to grow spiritually. And as a person, as a human, as a soul, having a human experience. So, you know, it's how you see something. Everyone else is allowed to see things how they see them. Everyone else is allowed to have their own way of doing something and their own intentions. You just have to bring it back to you. What do you choose? What's your real intention on something? I felt like I was just on a soapbox <laughs> there, but hopefully like you can, you know, also when I do readings, like the messages that come through can only come through from my own personal experiences, my own personal growths, trials, tribulations, heartaches, happiness, all that stuff is how I can express what I see in scenarios, that's why I use music, because I connect to music. So, and they're just little messages going out there so that you connect to the things inside of you and your own experiences and things that you've gone through and signs and signals that bring you on that path to something being clear. And everything is balance, you know, even with stuff like this, it's balancing your energy. It's Sometimes needing to know something because you want a little help. You want some direction and clarity. And sometimes we're just not meant to know. It's time to sleep. It's time to just allow something to be and let it go. Redirect your attention to something else. And when it comes back, it's going to feel right. It's going to feel natural. So let's, speaking of souls, let's see what the soul's journey lesson cards have to say. All right, let's get some clarity on no need to do. And I just heard Do What You Have to Do by Sarah McLaughlin. That's a really pretty song. Is that spin off spin? Long time waiting. No, that's Angel. Maybe it's Angel and Do What You Need to Do because I'm getting the title of one and hearing the other one. So, um, let's continue. Get one card from the soul's journey for the collective. Regret. I know that I cannot change the past. So allowance. We can't go back. 
you know, you can't change somebody else's actions from the past. You can't change how you interacted, how you reacted, how you didn't react, how you overreacted, how you didn't, how you, how you left and didn't do anything. Sometimes it's just things that happen in our life, experiences. You know, if it's regret, it usually involves yourself. You know, you can regret going through something like that. But usually it has some kind of self, there's some kind of um, how you were involved with something when regret comes through. So, you know, you can't change the past. You can be in the now, see it as a lesson, take something that happened, make changes for the future, maybe for you, maybe for others. Um, sometimes you never get a chance to heal a situation. Sometimes you get another chance. You get a redo. Sometimes you don't, and you have to do that redo with a new person or a new situation because you have changed and evolved. And if that shitty-ass situation didn't happen, you wouldn't have the self-awareness to know when you're possibly in another you know, crappy situation in the future that you can now do it a different way. Or you can choose to just repeat stuff the same way and then not really get the growth. And sometimes the hardest situations we go through just create the biggest growth, the biggest changes in our lives. So we have this. It's at the bottom. Doubt. Like wonderful and weird cards today. Okay, doubt. This is pretty. It looks like a labyrinth. It looks like... Looks like, I want to say, the f it's power in the top deck. I can see the card. I think it's the Four of Pentacles. It looks a little like that. And like, looks like a pyramid. And then when you like zoom in and look closely at that card, it's like there's little doors. There's a sunshine in the middle. There's different ways through and in and out. You have this beautiful flower. It's like a mandala. It's really pretty. I release the need. Well, here we go. I mean, doubt, but it says I release the need to know all the answers. Sometimes the best part is figuring it out. Sometimes the best part is just having the experience. You know, the sleep that we get in the dark, the detours that we have. So if there's something like you really, 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 really want to know and you're kind of like, doing a little overkill and trying to figure something out or like wanting something to be or pushing something to happen. Try to gentle that energy. Try to find a balance, you know, somehow bring something back to you, change your focus to something else. Um, sometimes we don't get the answer right away. Sometimes we never get the answer. If it's like a person or something like that, but sometimes we get the answer somewhere else, a better answer, a better situation. Um, let's see. Let's go to the tarot. I've never used this in a reading. I don't really ever really use it myself. I thought it looked really pretty. And then I kind of got it. And sometimes you get cards and you're like, well, that's pretty. <laughs> you look at it a little bit and then it goes on the shelf with the other ones. And the other ones I get and I'm like, I don't know why I like them so much. So let's see i do like the energy and the colors and everything on this card so i'm kind of curious to see what kind of messages come from the good tarot clarity for the collective on manifestation no need to do no need to push being where you are living in the now here you are thank you for being here with me And regret. Can't change the past, but you can do it different in the future. And be aware of what you got now. I just heard what you got going on. You got something going on now. Something good. Ooh, these cards are slippy. Let's get one card for the collective, please.
Eight of Earth. Oh, it's music. It's a violin. It's a violin where the, like, instead of a scroll at the top, it's a, um, it's like a tree and it has all these pentacles. Oh, of course I don't have my fingers. Like my, I guess these are the glasses we're using for this reading. Go with it. It's like a little fairy. Like dancing on the violin. There's also a violin with a <laughs> violin has a crack. That happened to my violin. Man. I had a when I was really I, I played violin since I was four. But um I had the most beautiful violin that my violin teacher made. He took years to make it by hand. It wasn't very pretty, but it had the most incredible rich sound. And then I, had, I was in New York City and that apartment, like the moisture and everything, it started to come apart and it ended up warping. It didn't have like really a crack, but it still played, but not really the same. And then the, the whole like board starting to move. Anyway, like I was so distraught about this violin. And like I did, I stopped playing. I was just frustrated you know I felt it was like sad I just didn't want to look at it <laughs> and then later on I got the little urge I was like mm, maybe I want to practice my violin again and I just like went on Amazon and bought like a hundred and twenty dollar white electric violin like a student model you know it still had all the little the things for the tuning like a student violin has and I was like oh it's gonna sound like crap and I'm telling you I plugged it into the amp and like changed the stuff around. You thought it was in a concert hall. I was like, I can't believe this violin. <laughs> it's a hundred dollars. And it sounded amazing. And like did a little practice. I should probably practice a little more than I do. Um, but then I had a gift this year for my birthday. Somebody didn't know that I played the violin and they played in college and had the most gorgeous violin from Germany just in their house. And I was gifted this amazing violin. And I, I'm getting chills now. I feel like I'm gonna cry. It was such a special gift. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this is a weird video, guys. It was so touching. And I didn't expect it. And I didn't know how much healing it would bring me. And it's beautiful. So sometimes, you know, something goes away or it's as a crack. Sometimes you have to put something aside for a while and then maybe later it comes back just like by magic <laughs> or by word of mouth <laughs> because it's because of my mom talking that this person knew I played the violin. So going back to that green card. All right, I'm going to put these on so I don't look weird. Well, I like to be natural in these videos, you know, so you guys know it's just me. So the eight of earth is practicing. It is it, ironically the practicing card. It's, you know, putting time and energy and effort into something so that you get better. Sometimes we have to start over. <laughs> you know, we got a little bit, but it's, we're, we're a little rusty. So sometimes you have to restart something. You know, this is the apprentice card. It's sometimes having to put a lot of energy into something. You don't get paid what you like want yet, but you're getting the knowledge. You're getting the skills, you're getting better. So it's worth it because the, the, you know, the success and the prosperity and all that stuff does come later. It will come because you continue to put effort, put effort into something. Wow. I've never used these cards. I didn't think that would happen looking at these cards. Good job. Good tarot. But it's that for you. It's just my example. So what is that for you? What is maybe something you, you put it away, you thought you could never bring it out again or have that again? It could be even a relationship. But this is usually work-related. It's energy into your surroundings that you want to actually get better at something and you're willing to put in the work by yourself. It's kind of like the Three of Pentacles, but that's like working with others. This is more self-contained it's your own energy or if you're thinking about somebody this could be what's going on with them 
they're really trying to work something through, get better at something, build something up, you know, putting a lot of time in for maybe something they're thinking about manifesting later. But this has to happen first. Let's get another card. The sun, oh, this is like the best card. It's just so beautiful. And there you have the sunflowers. And they're both, see, the sunflowers always look at the sun. They always point, you know, they always recognize where that golden, beautiful, warmth light is. This is somebody in their truest self. Just feeling good being exactly who you are. You are beautiful and you're special and unique and you're important and this is an opportunity that's shining in your world meant for you this is meant for you it could be this is reverse for some people that somebody feels like you are meant for them it could be that but when the sun comes through it shines a light on everything everything that you doubted everything that you regretted all the things you were hard on yourself for not getting done. And it blesses every situation so that it brings more light into your world inside of you. You are like a big sun that's just shining. So 19, it could be one really big opportunity or really feeling like everything's changed, getting real big clarity. It's come out into the daylight. And it cycles. The sun is out for the day and then it has to go away for a little while so you can sleep and rest and, you know, process. And then it comes out again. The sun is always going to shine. Maybe it's like a bunch of rainy days. You don't see it for a little while. It will come back. And there's still the warmth there. You know, it's still coming through. Those rays are still there. They're not gone just because you can't see them. What's at the bottom? The Ace of Earth. A lot of earth energy it has a lot to do with like your stability, your surroundings, maybe your family, your job, your home, security, projects, like things that you can physically touch in your earth. Maybe it's helping your earth. But look at this book. Oh, he's so beautiful. He's got these big antlers. He looks like very peaceful, gentle but strong at the same time. There's like butterflies and growth off of the one antler. Like he may have gotten stuck in the bushes. Look here. You know, that deer was like trying to go in the raspberry bushes and he's like, ooh, awesome raspberries. And he's like, God, God damn, <laughs> things stuck in my antlers. You know, so it's not that he hasn't been through a situation. He got some juicy berries out of it, but now things stuck there but that's okay you bring them along eventually they're gonna fall off shake it off <laughs> what's that Taylor Swift <laughs> we don't usually get her oh, I got a Swifty song in there um, and the butterflies are transformation becoming something completely new you're standing on this boulder which is like really powerful it's like it's like up there on a stage being beautiful and seen Ace of Earth is like the little golden ticket from the universe. Here you go. <laughs> this gorgeous opportunity is for you. Are you ready? Are you going to take it? You know, maybe it wasn't ready before because this is just, I mean, this is maybe you weren't ready. Go either way, but this, when this Ace of Earth comes through, it's worth the work. It's worth the wait. It's worth the attention. It's worth the cycles to knowing when to put something aside, when to rest. There's a time for everything. But this ace is an opportunity. It's usually like a job, a business idea, a home. Um, it could be like something financial. It could be like knowledge, 
school. It's something that you can do where it has the possibility to bring like tremendous abundance into your world. But you have to do something with it. You have to sign up for that class or go to that interview. You know, if it's just like you, you, you've read about the interview online, but you never go there, you might not know it's the perfect thing for you. I mean, even if this has to do with love, if you don't say yes and try and go on that blind date, you're not going to know. But this you're going to know is for you or somebody else knows that you are for them. You are the right person for the job. And you, after you, you choose to start, you got to show up. And then you got to give it a try and it's a little weird in the beginning because you don't know quite what you're doing and then you got to put some more effort and maybe be the apprentice and get a little bit better because you know get more into the flow and then eventually it becomes effortless like easy or you're easy you know you can navigate those storms and that come or you know when the storm comes you don't need to water the garden a day you got it you know it's good so it's also having patience. You know, I always like to see the seed and somebody planting a seed in the earth. It's down there. Like, are you going to grow today? Are you going to grow today? Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not growing huge roots. But it's not reaching into the earth and yanking it up before it's actually ready to sprout out and grow in its own time. So it's effort and energy and attention, but it's awareness. You know, being there, knowing when when something needs something and when it doesn't. <laughs> I'm going all over the place with this reading. This is really pretty, though. It's nice. The sun and the ace earth and the eight of earth. I don't even know if I have another card. I don't even know if I brought out another. Hmm. Did I even bring out another tarot deck to clarify with? I may not have. I may not have. Which means maybe this is the end of the reading. What are we at? 32? Do I have anything here? I have the traditional tarot. Let's go traditional. Let's pull one more card, get a little clarity, see if this sums it all up or brings something together or brings another twist because sometimes that happens to the Ace of Earth, the Eight of Earth. What is it? Oh, strength. Perfect. So pretty. So gentle strength. This is eight. You got infinity above you here. You have this woman, like just petting the lion, sticking her hand in its mouth. I mean, whatever situation this is, it takes a special person, you know, to handle this really wild, really big, really scary animal. It's really powerful. Look at how she's just a little lady. How is she the one that's able to just reach in this lion's mouth and like help its tooth or whatever? Here you go, kitty, kitty. <laughs> and that has to come with trust. There's a trust between these two. There's a gentleness. This lion trusts that she, it, you know, she's not going to harm it. You know, force is this pushing something to happen. Trying to whip that lion to get it to work is not going to really give it the trust. It's not this kind of energy. This is when the gentle approach shows power. The whispers better than the yell. The honey on the wound. A day-by-day -day situation. This may not have happened right away. This could have taken years. Or, you know, maybe she had this little lion as a little cub. And it just trusted her right away, but they've still grown together in every situation. Maybe you're dealing with a Leo. It could be a Leo, too. I just get that this is something that's like, it's just like the infinity above her. It's, I don't know, I see like a double halo. It's just also like acknowledging the animal beast lusty side in you in some decks this is called lust and it's not not acknowledging it that 
instinctual animal part of us is part of us to just react to certain things. But when you have awareness of it, you're able to have willpower and you can change how you may have approached something in the future. It's at the bottom. Oh, the lovers. Of course it's the lovers. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, wait. I got a cover. <laughs> it's the lovers. <laughs> this card. So you have this jacket. So it's, it could be about a decision. Maybe this is going to... Maybe it is somebody feeling this way. They think you're the most powerful, beautiful thing. Gentle, strong. Handle anything that they've ever seen. You're like freaking sunshine in the world. Maybe somebody else wants to make you this offer and work really hard for you. It could totally go the other way. <sighs> Maybe you just have to wait for a little work to be done for that opportunity to come through. But with the lovers, there's um, everybody has free will. Sometimes people like are like you know on board sometimes they're not sometimes they're into you sometimes they're not sometimes you're meant to be sometimes you're not sometimes you're meant to be for a little while and that changes so many situations but this is usually two people that really do care about each other and consider the other and possibly the people that they care about in this decision you have this beautiful angel here I mean, it's probably, it's probably Archangel Michael, but because I feel like it's a message or they're speaking, it could be Gabriel. Like purple and red and fiery hair. It's kind of like, look at this angel's hair. It's almost like it has the same little like thing that the, like little, like they got caught in the bushes, <laughs> like deer did. Um, but it's, it is trying to make a decision. It could be just the masculine and the feminine inside of you. The what you put energy into and what you allow to come through. We all have masculine and feminine in us. Um, maybe choosing to partner with someone or choosing not to. It is a decision, but it involves your heart and hopefully the highest grade of, greatest good of both you and if it involves another person and them or many. If you're you know, with a group or a family or the world. Um, but it's a, it is a beautiful energy. It's the major arcana six, it's the lovers. So it could be making a choice to make, maybe have some self love back to you first, because when we are in a beautiful vibrational state and doing healthy things for us and healthy things in our world, that are good for others too, then we tend to attract that kind of energy back to us, which would be a pretty healthy relationship. I mean, we can heal each other too. Sometimes you, you know, you meet people and you are just a healing energy to them and they are to you, but it's not a, I'm going to fix you situation or I'll make you better because then it's kind of in a weird it changes the dynamic, you know, rather than it being equal, equal. These two are their authentic selves and they look completely equal and opposite at the same time. There's also a volcano in the back. <laughs> Can I cover them up and show you that? So, I mean, there's something that could explode at any time. Something like, you know, some power, some possibility, some something. And it does look like there's also a kind of hate that I have to keep covering these cards. You know, it looks like there's a lot of clouds up here, but yet there's sunshine and it's totally clear here. So cloudy days, sunny days, blue days, gray days. We're constantly being moved, you know, to make choices. Hopefully every little choice brings us a little bit further along our way, brings us a little more strength, more beautiful opportunities that we take and take care of and recognize the sun when it's there and with that i bid you adieu i hope this reading was helpful i love you so much and i'll see you soon